This week on Maker Update, an artificially intelligent coffee maker, a one-button music remote, talking skulls, singing fish, and blinking bots. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well and finding time to work on your own projects. Uh, I found some time to work on a little 3D printed tamp for an espresso machine that I'm restoring. It's just a little thing, but sometimes those little tiny easy projects are a great excuse to focus in on the details. It's also a great tie-in to the project of the week. Over on the Surfin' Circuits blog, Mark Smith shows off how he turned this Ranchilo espresso machine into an automated, internet-connected, perfection-seeking instrument of legendary coffee. When you buy a machine like this for your home, the dream is to be able to make espresso whenever you want. But the reality is that these machines take a long time to warm up the water and build up their pressure before they're ready to go. To solve this problem, Mark gives his machine the ability to predict when he'll want coffee, which warms up the machine 30 minutes ahead of time so it's ready to go. To do this, he's using a Raspberry Pi Zero and a machine learning algorithm that's trained on when he typically turns on the machine. But that's not all. He also created a web dashboard so that he can track the stats of his machine from anywhere in the world. And from here, he can also manually trigger it to start warming up. He's added a PID type sensor in the boiler so that he can dial in the brew temperature within one degree accuracy. And by harnessing this temperature sensor, he's also created an auto shot mode that with a single press, automatically brings the boiler up to a defined temperature and pulls the shot without you having to do anything. And then as a final touch, he added a Nixie tube on the front of the machine that indicates the level of the water tank as well as the temperature of the boiler and the progress of the shot while you're brewing. All of this, and he still managed to non-destructively install all the electronics and sensors into an already crowded machine. You can find the instructions, source code, 3D printed files, and build materials all on his website. Now for some news, this past weekend, Becky Stern gave a talk at Make a Fair Prague and was nice enough to share some video clips that she took. One of the highlights was this giant version of Jiri Prow's mechanical flower sculpture. Some of you may recognize Jiri's work from the small circuit sculptures we've covered on the show. It's great to see him continue to develop these ideas and go big. Becky also showed some footage of a table clock called the XXOX it uses these retro electromechanical segment displays that have these awesome split flap sounds. You also get 20 alarm sounds, it's USB rechargeable, and it's smart enough not to make all those split flap click sounds while you're trying to sleep. Honestly, I'm just so happy to see a big maker fair like this happening again. It gives me hope. Hackaday and Digikey have teamed up for a Halloween Hackfest contest and if you have a Halloween project or a costume that uses electronics, you can enter to win $150 in DigiKey credit. That amount is doubled if your project happens to use an Adafruit board. You can find more details using the link in the description. And the contest closes on Monday, October 11th. In hardware news, last week, Vacuform manufacturer Meku announced a new higher resolution machine called the Multiplier. The extra detail is possible because they've added pressurized air into the chamber, which helps to push the vacuum form material into all the nooks and crannies of your form. Combined with resin casting, you can get something comparable to injection molding but without all the complexity and expense of machining out a mold. No word yet on pricing or availability, but it's neat to see some new tool ideas out there. Also, I have to say that for something that could have easily come out looking like a panini press, they put a lot of effort into making this thing look awesome. Teenage Engineering, the design group that makes the OP1 synthesizer and all those fun pocket operator sequencers, they're the ones that did the product design on this. Now for more projects, there's a great collaboration between Sophie Wong and Liz from Blitz City DIY. They made this one button Bluetooth remote control that works as a play pause button for media playback on Apple devices. The project uses an Adafruit Feather Blue Fruit board and is coded in CircuitPython. Liz has the code posted up on GitHub, which you can essentially drag and drop onto your board. But I'll be honest, I don't really have a use for a dedicated play pause button, 
What I'm sure to use though is this recipe for making a cool one button enclosure. It has all the appeal of a custom guitar pedal, but what you're seeing here is a 3D printed box with a milled aluminum plate on top that steals the show. If you don't have a desktop mill like Sophie's, I imagine you can get some mileage out of printer toner transfer, creating a stencil, or using something like a desktop vinyl cutter to transfer graphics or mask and etch a design. On Hackaday, Aspiring Roboticist has this early entry to the Halloween Hackfest contest. It's a Raspberry Pi based system for translating audio into servo movement. In this case, it's being used to drive the mouth movement of a prop skull. The instructions show how to create the interaction either from a recorded audio clip or using a microphone. You can find other guides that give you a similar result using an Arduino, but if Raspberry Pi is your comfort zone, this is a great way to breathe some animatronic life into your Halloween props. Finally, as some of you know, I have a soft spot for the big mouth Billy Bass singing fish, so I couldn't resist this project from Natasha Zerny. She made her own cardboard version, animated with servos, controlled by a micro bit, plugged into a Crazy Circuits bit breakout board. For sound, she's using an inexpensive MP3 player module and a pair of powered speakers. You can find the instructions, code, and even a template for cutting out the fish over on browndoggadgets.com. Time for some tools and tips. James Brutton has a great tip for your animatronic Halloween project. His latest video demonstrates how to get a smooth ramping movement from servos. This is one of those subtle details that separates beginner animatronic projects from the pro level stuff. Instead of jerky robotic movements, you get a kind of velocity curve that smoothly ramps up and down. With just a few lines of Arduino code, James shows how to make this happen with a simple sketch. He also includes the 3D design files if you want to reproduce this same model. Have you ever considered getting into engraving? Whether it's for jewelry or knife handles or enclosure lids for your Bluetooth remote controls, check out my interview with Caleb Kraft on the Cool Tools channel. He walks you through a great engraving setup for beginners. If you've never seen an engraving vise before, you're in for a treat. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this oldie but goodie on wire splicing techniques. Not just splicing, but also how to tap one wire into an existing line. Tapping is a technique I rarely find myself doing, but it's a cool trick that people rarely talk about. Be cool. Check out the video. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment if you like. Uh, you can get on the Maker Update email list so you can stay on top of each week's episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.